Chris Godinas, licensed professional counselor, also the host of We Need to Talk on every Sunday at noon, and then I do these little videos throughout the week. This video is for educational and informational purposes only. The views and opinions stated here are mine and mine alone. They do not represent the ACA, the APA, or any other therapist for that matter. Boom, shakalaka, done. I'd like to thank my sponsor, other side, there we go, BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash Chris Godinas. They're an online therapy company. They are international, and they are affordable. They do packages. I believe the um, packages start at like $65. No, Roomba, you may not come in. Go bye bye Go bye bye Go bye bye Thank you. Um, they start at $65, and they're very affordable, and I've had a lot of good feedback from people using them. So thank you. Betterhelp.com slash Chris Godinas. Okay, let's dive into questions. Hi, Chris, can you please explain cognitive dissonance? I don't understand. Okay, it's, it's, it, it is hard to understand. It is hard to wrap your head around. So cognitive dissonance is when targets of abuse have been told for years, gaslit, lied to, uh, you know, up is down, black is white, green is yellow, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And new information comes in. So you know, your abuser is telling you, oh, I would never do this to you. I would never hurt you. I would never. But they're doing it. And then somebody outside goes, hey, they're doing this. And then our brains go, no, no, they're not. No, they can't be. And we're kicking out the information that's going to save us, basically. So cognitive dissonance is where incoming information does not gel with what our abuser has been telling us. And rather than live through the discomfort of going oh my god they really are abusive they really are cruel they really are this they really are that we go no no uh -uh, no that's that's not true so cognitive dissonance is incoming information doesn't mash mesh with what our abuser have been telling us and it's so uncomfortable that we kick out the truth and we cling to that falsehood of who they presented to us so that's that's what cognitive dissonance is and it's deadly it's deadly because the cognitive dissonance makes it to the point where if we don't want to believe what we don't want to believe we'll completely forget having heard the information that our abuser is abusive so let me give you a great example a great example is somebody goes out to dinner with somebody and says hey so and so listen we think you're being abused your your person is doing this 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 and this and of course they go no no they're not it's no you're wrong and blah 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 blah, blah. and then a week later they call the person up and go were we supposed to go out to dinner like they literally kicked out the whole episode of having had lunch or dinner or whatever with the person because they couldn't handle the incoming information not matching up with what their abuser has been telling so that's cognitive dissonance. Incoming information doesn't match. And rather than go, oh, wait a minute, this, this new information over here is exactly what's happening to me. This old information that my abuser's telling me is not true. The little kid inside will cling to the old information and literally kick out any information that does not match what the abuser has been saying. So, and that's why, uh, it, it's kind of a short answer, but that's why it takes about seven times leaving for an abused person to leave before it sticks because their brain is literally messing with them because they're believing the, the information that the abuser has said as opposed to the incoming information from their therapist, from their friends, from their family, from their whatever. I mean, I literally had a person argue with me on what abuse was. You know, oh, that's not abuse. Yeah, it is. No, no, it's not abuse. Yeah, it is. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's disheartening and it's frightening. Roomba, go bye-bye, go bye-bye, thank you. It's disheartening and it's frightening because it's terrifying to watch somebody have that fog roll in. So the fog is the fear, the obligation, and the guilt. Fear, obligation, guilt. And so when that starts, you know, going through the head with the whole, no, no, this, this person has to love me. No, this person said they loved me. 
Well, they said they loved you, but their actions are doing the polar opposite. That's not love. If it hurts, it ain't love. You know, and a lot of times it's really sad because in working with abuse victims, targets of abuse, I will have to be very blunt with them and say, no, this is abuse. That's you know, if it hurts, it ain't love. And it's almost like watching them wake up out of a coma. I mean, it's just this, whoa, what have I been doing? You know, kind of thing. So it is, it's very terrifying to watch somebody come out of cognitive dissonance. It's very terrifying to watch somebody be in cognitive dissonance. So it's when incoming information does not match what they desperately want to believe. And it usually is the inner child. So that's why it's super, super important to start working on your inner child. The inner child is usually the one that keeps us stuck emotionally and sometimes stuck in these relationships because the inner child honestly is running the show and you don't want that. You want adult you to run the show. And the inner child is the one that goes, but, but, but. And that's why I always ask people, how old are you when you're wanting to believe your abuser and not your therapist? How old are you when you're wanting to believe your abuser and not your family that loves you? How old are you when you're wanting to believe your abuser and not your friends who love you? So it's an inner child thing. And what happens is, is our inner child looks outside of us. And when I say family, I don't mean necessarily like the family of origin. It could be siblings or it could be cousins or it could be, you know, some other family member that is healthy that's going, hello, problem. So what the inner child does is they look outside of the person and they go, ooh, somebody over here who kind of sort of reminds me of the caregiver I had the most difficult time with. I know. If I can make them love me, I prove this caregiver wrong, okay? Half of a doo-doo sandwich, half of a doo-doo sandwich, <clears throat> total doo-doo sandwich. Which is why when people are contemplating leaving an abusive relationship, it doesn't happen immediately. You've got to get through to that inner child. This relationship is deadly. This relationship is dangerous. We're not going to fix mom and dad or grandparents or whoever raised us by getting involved with somebody who's just like them. You can never make somebody who's just like them love you because they don't love themselves. And that's the sad truth. They do not love themselves. They do not love. They don't have emotions the way we do. And that's where the inner child goes, but, but, but. So I swear to you, if you hear yourself going, but, 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 stop. How old are you? Seriously, who's running the show at that point in time? Because if you're letting your inner child run the show, it's going to get you killed. It is. I, I cannot stress that enough. And people, it makes me very angry when I hear people who've never studied this stuff go, oh, that's not true. They would never do. Yeah, they would. Yeah, they would. Happens every damn day. There is domestic violence that leads to death happening every day in this country. Every day hour in this country. You betcha. Would they do it? You betcha. If they're a dark enough triad, yep, they'll do it. If they're a psychopath, narcissist, control freak, you betcha. So it's really important to start working on your inner child and getting that handled so that you're not putting all of your self-esteem into making this unavailable, unloving, uncaring, unkind person love you they're never going to love you these people over here are never going to love you trying to make that person love you to prove these people wrong is never going to work it's never going to fix the original relationship so my strongest suggestion is if you are experiencing cognitive dis dissonance if you are having a hard time leaving an abusive situation please get with a good therapist get with a good trauma therapist somebody who knows their a-hole from a hole in the ground i'm not kidding you get somebody who knows trauma inside out and can help you deal with the cognitive distance, do reality, you know, it's like this is reality, okay? They're, they are abusive. This is going to kill you, you know, that kind of thing. And start working on your self-esteem. So the Inner Child Workbook by Katherine Taylor or the uh, Regaining Your Inner Child by Lucia Cappuccioni, uh, uh, The Diseased Please, Harriet Breaker, CPTSD from Surviving to Thriving by Pete Walker, um, and the Self-Esteem Workbook by Glenn Schiraldi. 
those those are the books that you need to strengthen yourself to the point so that if your inner child does do the whole but 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 you can hear it and go ooh, how old am i in this moment damn i don't want to be acting like a four-year-old i don't want the six-year-old in charge i don't need my teenager in charge i need the adult me in charge so that's why it's important to get therapy so and, and work on it with those with those books all right my loves um okay so uh i will be doing another video on friday the weather here is crazy on sunday it was, or saturday sunday it was 79 monday it was 70 78 today on wednesday it's 68 so i'm like what is this weather doing I, do i wear long sleeves do i wear shorts i don't know anyway so there that is so i will be doing another video on friday that will be that until the following sunday because i'm taking new year's eve off so on uh new year's eve i will be doing a video on strangers are gold kids are dirt so that's going to be the title of that one that's you know why abusers treat total strangers great and treat their own family and friends that actually do love them like dirt so we're going to talk about that all right, my loves, I will talk to you again on Friday. Go have a fabulous day. Bye.